China and Nepal is considering building a 540-kilometer railway through the Himalayas. As we all know, the Qinghai-Tibet Railway is already a miracle of human engineering. Does China really want to bore through the Himalayas? As we all know, the world's longest railway tunnel, the Gothard Tunnel, is located in the central Swiss Alps, with a total length of 57 kilometers and took 11 years to build. So how long will the Himalayas tunnel take and how much will it cost? Although everything is an assumption at this stage, previous experience is that the cost of building a railway in an area with extremely harsh geological conditions is basically 100 million yuan per kilometer. As for the Himalayas tunnel, at least 10 billion renminbi is needed. As for the construction period, subject to external conditions, it will take about 10 years. In addition, if the tunnel is built at an altitude of more than 7,000 meters above sea level in the Himalayas, the length can be shortened, but considering that the air is thin and the temperature is too low, it is not suitable for people and vehicles to pass, so it is best to reduce the height of the tunnel to less than 5,000 meters. At the same time, a major difficulty in engineering operations in the Alpine zone is lack of oxygen. When the Qinghai Tibet Railway was built and the altitude was raised to 4,500 meters, 140,000 people participated in the construction, and there were no cases of death due to alpine hypoxia, but more than 100 people died because of a tire burst. Under high altitude conditions, the pressure difference between the inside and outside of the car tire is too large. It seems that boring through the Himalayas and building a tunnel is not an easy task. Perhaps, the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the railway laid on top of the snow-capped mountains, will tell us some stories. Why don't we review the construction process of the Qinghai Tibet Railway and see how Chinese builders drilled through the Kunlun Mountains step by step? Okay, let's get started. The Qinghai Tibet Railway, with a total length of 1,956 kilometers, has a total of 85 stations, with an average altitude of more than 4,000 meters. It is the plateau railway with the highest altitude and the longest line in the world and was officially open to traffic on July 1, 2006. In September 1958, the first phase of the Qinghai Tibet Railway project Xining to Galmud started construction. Everyone should pay attention that in 1958, not long after the founding of the People's Republic of China, the domestic infrastructure was still in its infancy. There was no capital and no technology. It was very difficult to build such a railway that was rejected by the world. Only through some precious old films can we see the hardships of road construction in those years. The road construction workers only had a thin coat to protect themselves in the heavy snow. Due to the limitations of engineering technology and funding at that time, the railway construction project was not continuous, and it was not officially open to traffic until July 30, 1984. Although the first phase of the project is only 814 kilometers, it took 28 years to complete the construction. So, we can tell that building railways above 3,000 meters was really not easy at that time. The first stage, which is relatively simple, is so laborious. How should the second stage with higher altitude and longer lines be constructed? On June 29, 2001, 17 years after the completion of the first phase of the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the second phase of the 1,142-kilometer project from Golmud to Lhasa was officially started. Golmud is an important demarcation point for entering Tibet. If you go south from Golmud, you must first enter the Kunlun Mountains. As we all know, Kunlun Mountain, also known as the Mountain of 10,000 Ancestors, is the most famous sacred mountain in China. The most notable feature of the Kunlun Mountains is that they are high, with an altitude of more than 4,000 meters. The oxygen content here is only 50% of that in the plains. The lowest temperature can reach minus 30 degrees Celsius, and the living conditions are extremely harsh. But this is the only place to enter Tibet and it is also a battle that the road builders focus their efforts on. Here, a 1,686-meter-long Kunlun Mountain Tunnel is to be built, that is to say, the Kunlun Mountain must be cut through. The Kunlun Mountain Tunnel is destined to become the longest plateau permafrost tunnel in the world. Although the tunnel has only two waterproof layers, one insulation layer and one concrete layer, the construction is extremely difficult. 
However, compared to the altitude of 4,648 meters above sea level, construction difficulty is not the most important problem. Anyone who has been to the plateau knows that when the human body enters a plateau above 3,000 meters above sea level and is exposed to a low pressure and low oxygen environment, various discomforts may occur, which are collectively referred to as altitude sickness. Among them, high-altitude pulmonary edema and high-altitude cerebral edema are the most dangerous and even fatal. It is very difficult for ordinary people to live in such a high latitude, and construction workers have to do heavy physical labor here. The road construction workers at that time needed to carry 5 kilograms of oxygen cylinders on their backs, inhaling oxygen while working. They were actually building railways with their lives. Do you think this is the most dangerous construction site in the world? At that time, in order to ensure the safety of road construction workers, a hyperbaric oxygen chamber was built at the Kunlun Mountain Pass. If the workers showed signs of acute altitude sickness, they were immediately carried into the hyperbaric chamber for treatment. The number of people who were carried into the hyperbaric oxygen chamber at the Kunlun Mountain Pass was innumerable and it was precisely because of it that none of the 140,000 construction team died of acute mountain sickness. After the Kunlun Mountain Pass, there is a 550-kilometer-long tundra, which is also the most dangerous enemy for building the Qinghai-Tibet Railway. Building a railway on permafrost is a worldwide problem. Frozen soil freezes and expands in winter, and when it melts in summer, it turns into thin mud, and the roadbed of the railway will be damaged. Therefore, keeping the permafrost from thawing is a key point in the construction of the Qinghai-Tibet Railway. Chinese experts have proposed many creative railway construction plans. There is the heat rod cooling method. The heat rod is filled with liquid ammonia. After the liquid ammonia absorbs the heat of the soil, the ammonia turns into a gas and rises. When the cold air meets the cold air at the top of the heat rod, the heat can be taken away through the heat sink, and the ammonia is recondensed. The liquid flows back to the bottom of the rod, and the cycle is reciprocating. If they encounter a very unstable permafrost layer, they can only use the method of building bridges. The bridge foundation was deeply driven into the underground permafrost to build a bridge that would never sink. Through these means, the permafrost problem along the railway was completely solved. The railway continues to move forward, and it enters the Dongxiong grassland. Next to the Dongxiong is one of the three holy lakes in Tibet, Namso Lake. On the vast grassland, wild yaks, yellow sheep and other animals often come and go, in order to stay away from the surrounding animal reserves, the railway detours for more than 30 kilometers, and more than 300 million yuan is invested to avoid these places. Although passengers cannot enjoy the beautiful lake view on the train, in order to maintain the fragile ecological environment of the plateau, this is something that human beings must do. When the car passed through the Dangshan grassland, it entered the northern gate of Lhasa. After that, the railway traveled along the valley and could go straight to Lhasa, the top of the mountains and the source of all waters. Thanks for listening, see you.